In today's video, we'll take a practical look at using an op amp to condition the voltage coming from a sensor. So a friend of mine was working on a design recently uh, using an RF power sensor. And that power sensor gave him a 2.5 volt output when uh, the minimum input power was applied to the sensor and gave an output of 0.5 volts when the maximum input power was applied to the sensor. And he said, you know, I really want that range to go from 0 volts to 5 volts so I can apply it to a digital bar graph meter. So how do I do that? So that's what this example is all about. So here's a graphical way to look at it. We go from you know, plus 2.5 to plus 0.5, uh, and that is going to correspond to a 0 to 5 volt output. So as this input voltage drops, we want the output voltage to rise. So we're going to want to do essentially this kind of a seesaw operation uh, with our conditioning circuit. Well, that's exactly what an inverting op amp does. It essentially seesaws around uh, the offset voltage. In most cases, people look at op-amp circuits, this non-inverting input is at zero, and the voltages seesaw around that zero volts. Uh, so the gain that we want to have is, you know, we've got a two volt change at the input, we want a five volt change at the output, so that tells us we want a gain of minus 2.5. So that tells us that the ratio of R2 to R1 is going to be 2.5. Let's look at the selection criteria for R1 and R2. Now, one thing we want to consider is the output impedance of the sensor. Now in our case the sensor output impedance is fairly low, so we don't have to worry about R1 loading it down too much, so that's really not too much of a concern. We also might want to take a look at the load at the op amp output. How much current does the output have to drive through R2 to kind of close that loop? Other factors may be things like power dissipation and things like that. So for a number of these reasons, we want those, these currents in R1 and R2 be, to be in the tens of microamps. So we're looking at tens of K for the resistor values. And I played around with these values a little bit till I found some standard values that kind of met this 2.5 to 1 criteria. So if we just arbitrarily pick some values here, like if we start with R1 of 33K, multiply that by 2.5, the next closest standard value is 82K. So that'll be our R1 and R2. Now the next thing we need to look at is the offset voltage that's applied to the non-inverting input in order to get the output to be in the right range. It turns out that that graphical uh, thing I showed you on the previous page gives us the value. By connecting the dots of these two conditions, where those two points cross is where they'd cross for any value in this relationship. So that value, you know, which is about oh, approximately about 1.8 or so, is actually the offset voltage. However, we want to compute it a little bit more precisely. So let's just consider one of the states. We know that 2.5 volts in, we want 0 volts out. Well, that's just a simple voltage divider, right? We have 2.5 uh, volts at one side, we have R1 and R2 going to effectively ground, or 0 volts at this end. And because the op amp input doesn't draw any current, we can consider this just a simple voltage divider. So we can simply run this calculation. You have two and a half volts divided by R1 plus R2 gives me the current through the stack. Multiplied by R2 gives me the voltage across R2. So that tells us the offset voltage is 1.78 volts. Here's a couple more design details. Uh, my friend wanted a single 5 volt supply, so that dictates the need for a single supply op amp. The output needs to go from 0 to 5 volts, which means that we need rail to rail output swing. And that's another reason why we picked relatively large values for R1 and R2, so that we're not asking the output to push a lot of current. That makes it easier to reach the supply rails. The input voltage range has to include 1.78 volts, so not a problem there. Now a nice op amp that I have here that's very inexpensive and uh, easy to use is this MCP6002 from Microchip. It's a single supply op amp that uh, can be used up to a 6 volt supply, rail to rail input and output, N is in a dip package, really handy uh, for prototyping, not have to mess around with the surface mount parts. So we still have to generate that V offset voltage for the non-inverting input. And again, it's just another resistor divider. We have a 5 volt supply, our, call it R3 and R4. We know that we want the voltage uh, at this point to be 1.78 volts. We know that the voltage across R3, for example, is going to be 5 minus 1.78 or 3.22. The voltage across R4 is 1.78, and the resistor ratio of R3 to R4 is going to be equal to that voltage ratio, uh, which is 3.22 divided by 1.78, or 1.8. So playing around again with some standard resistor values, I found that 
you know, 15K R4 and 27K R3 satisfy that 1.8 to 1 uh, resistor ratio. So here's our final circuit. Uh, it's an inverting op amp, 33K, 82K gives us our minus 2.5 gain. And then the resistor divider sets up the V offset at the non-inverting input. Since I don't have the sensor that my friend is using, I'm just going to simulate that sensor voltage uh, with this simple resistor divider here, 12K, a 10K pot, and 2.2K, and that'll give me you know, the about plus 0.5 to 2.5 volt swing. And since that's a relatively high impedance output, I'm just buffering it with uh, the other op amp that's in that package to give me a low impedance output. And I'll bring that to the input here to go test it. Of course, the nice thing about the dip package, it makes it very easy to prototype it on this solderless breadboard. So there's our dual op amp, and then just a couple of resistors, the pot that's actually simulating the sensor, all ready to go. And I've got it hooked up to a power supply and a couple of meters. With the power supply turned on, we'll verify that we have uh, 5 volts VCC. And let's also verify the V offset value is about 1.78 volts. I'll also verify that my sensor simulator can get uh, just a little bit below a half a volt and all the way up to just a little bit above 2.5 so we can accurately simulate the entire sensor range. So this meter is hooked into the sensor simulator. Uh, so right now it's sitting at uh, two and a half volt scale so that's reading 2.5 volts so that's simulating the low RF input power into the sensor and then this uh, meter is sitting at the output of our signal conditioning circuit. It's on a 10 volt scale and showing that we're getting zero output with 2.5 volts in. As we simulate increased RF power into the sensor you can see the sensor voltage coming down and our signal conditioning circuit come up. And we see as we dive, drive this all the way down to the sensor giving us a half a volt output, we can see now that the output of our signal conditioning circuit is 5 volts. A couple of final thoughts. Always a good idea to add some power supply decoupling capacitors, uh, not only at the power supply entry point to the board, maybe with some bulk you know, electrolytic decoupling, but also right at the supply pins for the analog op amps. And you may use some you know, lower value ceramic caps there to better filter high frequency noise. Now depending on how precise you needed that offset voltage to be or the gain to be, you might choose to add some trim pots. And they could be added, for example, if we put a trim pot between uh, here and here and have the wiper go to the negative input, you could trim the gain, or you could do the same thing by inserting a trim pot here and have the wiper go to the non-inverting input to trim the offset value. In some applications, you might worry about the input current to the op amp. Uh, the input current here can cause offset voltages to appear at the resistors at the inputs. You may choose to try to match these resistors to minimize that offset value. But in the case of this MCP6002, the input currents are in the, oh, I think it's in picoamps. So the amount of offset due to input currents is negligible, so we don't worry about it here. And again, depending on how precise things need to be, you might need to add some provisions to trim out the input voltage offset of the op amp. Again, for this application, we didn't need to do that. But these are things that you might consider in your sensor conditioning circuits. So I hope this video taught you a little something about the practical application of op amps to do some basic signal conditioning uh, to change a sensor voltage, for example, from the range that it produces to something that you might want for your follow-on circuits. So again, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so. And thanks again, as always, for watching.